Black is recognized. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and um, thank all of you for being here today. Uh, Mr. Kukuji, thank you for representing Tennessee, but we know that we have other groups there, such as the Chattanooga Tea Party and the Roan County Tea Party, that could likewise give similar testimony. So we really appreciate you all being here today. I think prior to the exposure of what has just most recently happened in the IRS, if we were to ask the American people about their impression of the IRS, I think we would hear the words fear, powerlessness, um, intimidation, maybe distrust. And those are words that would have been used prior to this, but I think what has now happened has confirmed that. And it certainly is a sad day for our country where um, our founding fathers uh, set up those Bill of Rights to ensure us that we wouldn't have a government that would intimidate uh, the very citizens of the country. And so it is a really, really sad time that we have come to this point where we have actually confirmed what many people would have said prior to this. Um, if I could ask the staff to bring up a, uh, one of the pieces of information that's in our file here. Um, Mr. Kukaji, uh, I bring this up because this comes as a result of a question that was asked of you, um, and this is question uh, number 24 on your questionnaire, where they actually ask you the names of those um, students that you would be educating. Um, can you give me any thought of why this would be of particular interest in order to establish um, your 501c4 status? Uh, no, not it's, it's stunning. It's unbelievable. I, I can't give an answer. I've been thinking about it for 29 months as to why they would want to know the names of seventh graders that I'm teaching Western civilization, political philosophy, the basic theories of economics. Why in the world would the IRS want to know the names of these students but for perhaps intimidation of them and their parents to discourage them from being taught under my tutelage? Certainly very chilling, something we wouldn't expect here in the United States. We'd be looking at some communistic countries if we were to think about this kind of activity. Um, one of my colleagues said that none of you were silenced. And um, what I'd like to know, and, and maybe we can start over here with you, Ms. Gertzen. Um, do you feel that what was occurring here in both the intimidation and not getting the status, um, did it silence you? Well, obviously I'm here, so no, it didn't silence <laughs> well, me. Well, I'm in your group in, in but, being able to do what your group was intended. Oh, I was going to say, I do have members that have come up to me and that are fearful. They don't want to give, they don't want to write their name on any sign-up form that we may have. Um, I also have people emailing me that they are getting audited for the first time ever, and they gave during the campaign. So um, I can't put a number on how much, on how it has hindered our organization, but it has because people have told me. Ms. Martinick? We have not been silenced, but if we didn't have uh, accessibility to the Thomas More Society and attorneys, we may have been. That's true. Mm -hmm. So you had some folks there to help you out so that. And I would agree. Them. Had we not had the ACLJ, we couldn't have fought the Thank government. You. Ms. Kenny? We are not silenced, but there is a fist and a hand over our mouth because our educational um, opportunities to everything from creating brochures or pamphlets on the Constitution to buying such things as uh, bookmarks that educate people about the Constitution. That has been limited to the postcards on getting voter information. That has been constricted because we simply don't have the funds. Thank you. Mr. Eastman? You know, uh, I, my nature is not to be silenced by anything, but the number one comment I get every time I do something like this is, uh, thank you for standing up for us. Uh, you must be very brave. <laughs> and uh, uh, I don't think it's brave. I think it's citizenship duty um, that we stand up every chance we get. Ms. Balsam. I feel like if we don't speak up now, that time may be lost. So I'm doing my best to speak up. Um, but, you know, without the ACLJ and the knowledge of the other groups being targeted, I'm really not sure what, what would have happened. And there was a time when I was just ready to just say forget this whole thing. And um, it, it, it's very chilling. And I just think that... We, my time not, is running out. Okay, my point okay, that I want to make here, right, because I know that it's going to come really quickly, Sorry. is that your First Amendment rights... Um, are being violated here. Mr. Kuka, do you want to just, for the yeah, little time we're being, Whether or not it's chilling, I think, was even evidence today. Because some of the Democrats on this committee actually implied that what is so social welfare to them is social welfare. 
but what might be social welfare to us is somehow negotiable. Thank you. I yield back.